obviously you talked about everything else that had gone into that decision. As far as coming back for another year, how did he affect that decision? How did Trout affect that? Yeah. He really didn't. I mean, he, he I kind of I kind of knew what Trot was going to do. Um, but I kind of just wanted to, you know, just stay in my own lane, just run my own race. And, you know, I just kept praying about it. And Trot supported whatever I was going to do, whether that was the league or staying. But um, he just told me to make the best decision for me and my family. You know, that's just what I did, or what I felt like I did. And, um, but, yeah, he didn't really influence it at all. He just said make the best decision for me and my family. They say, they say last one, best one. Does it feel like that? Like, what, what are you kind of hoping and expecting from yourself this season? Um, <laughs> I hope his last one, best one, but uh, I, I feel like the work that I put in um, since the season ended up until now, um, it should set me up to be in that position. Uh, of course, I have a long way to go. Our team has a long way to go to get to where we want to be, but you know, we're definitely trending in the right direction, and we're taking those steps in order to be successful. So, you know, come August or you know, months after that, we should be good, but I'm just looking forward to it. I would say our young guys, um, specifically like Jamal Anderson, D. Creighton, and like even like Drew Woodass who just got here, CJ Cooper Taylor. Uh, just seeing those guys, like they've really taken a step from like last season to now, just mentally and physically. Um, so I'm excited for the world to see what they can do this year, but you know, I, I definitely see the step that they've taken, so it should be special for them. This defense as a whole ranks one of the better ones in the country, but what next steps can this unit take to be even more successful? With the yeah, we were good last year. I mean, we have a, there was a lot of meat left on the bone. Though. Like we were, we, I think we finished eighth total, but I mean, with all the mistakes that we had and all the mental errors and communication issues, like. We should have been higher than that, and that's the thing that we all know. But so we should, we got to go out there and earn it every single day. So that's what we've been working towards this year, this off season, and uh, I'm excited to see what we do this year. I don't think it changes our mentality. I think regardless of who we are playing first game, we're gonna attack every single day. And attack, yeah, it's attack every single against the national championship, and um, that's playing Georgia and not. I mean, Georgia, they're obviously they've arguably been the best team in college football the past couple of years. So, um, but no, it doesn't change our mindset. We just attack every single day against the national championship, and um, by doing so, we should be we should be set up in a good position. What did you learn about last year's to help you be more ready for this year's opponent? I would say. Game one, play play one. We got to be playoff ready. Like we can't we can't get warmed up as the games go by, as the season goes by. Like from the first snap, we got to be playoff ready from from the jump. So that's probably what I would say, and that's that's been like coach's emphasis this year. Like we're not gonna sit around and warm up throughout the season. Like we're gonna from the first snap, like we're gonna be playoff ready. So that's been that's what I've been trying to preach to the guys too. How long did it take you to know that you were the best linebacker? I've heard a lot of good things. Um, I've also heard that I've been dropping a lot of picks in the game, so I'm not I'm not too happy to hear that. But you know, when I selfishly when I use myself, I, I usually play pretty good. But uh, you know, it, it's it's special just the fact that they brought back that game and I happen to be the highest rated linebacker. It's, it's such a blessing. So it's time to go out there this season and show why. Oh my God. RJ lied. No, no. We played in the PlayStation down here. I made him quit in the first quarter. Like, RJ sucks. I will tell that to his face. RJ sucks at that game. He is terrible. So, but it's, it's, uh, I, t I take, I probably spend too much time on that game. I probably should be watching film or something. But, uh, yeah, I play the game so much. Like, whenever I'm at home, I'm on the game. Like I said, RJ and I found we had some downtime last night, and we got a game in, made him quit. So I mean, I just I really take the time to, to make my own playbooks and do stuff like that. So yeah, RJ can't compete with me, can't. Barrett, we've talked to Cade just earlier about the pressure he's made. You see him more times than anybody here can count. 
What have you seen from him that makes you be excited about his progression in year two as a starter? I just think the leadership, the more of the leadership role he's taken on this year. Um, he's been a leader from the day that he stepped on campus, but you know, from last season to this season, he's really taken that next step and you know, getting to know his guys off the field and you know, taking them out to dinner and spending more time and extra film and extra throwing sessions, whatever it may be. Kate has really taken that time to do that. And I think that's really helped him on the field this, like from what I've seen in like our workouts and stuff like that. So, you know, every, all the guys respect him and just respect how he's about his business. And, you know, he's, you know, whatever, whenever he speaks, he speaks with some conviction. Everyone respects that about him. So I'm excited to see him take the next step. When you look back in the last year or two, what, what kind of work do you kind of point to that you think, okay, this is kind of what helped you turn into one of the better linebackers in the conference? I would say doing stuff that's not mandatory. Um, me and RJ, we'll, we'll probably we'll go up to the facility. Like it's pitch black outside, and we're hitting the field doing drills and running and doing stuff like that. And uh, we really like to call it like scary hours. And uh, we watched the uh, the Florida documentary. It's called Swamp Kings, and just how they would do stuff like that. We've tried to like really take on that and like do like our own thing with that. So I would say just putting in that extra time when it's not mandatory and just you know doing stuff when no one no one's around. How are you 